Hello, YouTube. My name is Justin, and today we're going to be talking about Gold Mining Inc. And this company is pretty exciting and very timely because we just saw a CPI print that has not been seen since the 1980s. I'm talking 1982 to be specific. So what does it mean? Uh, it means that uh, inflation is rising at a level we have not seen in decades. And uh, what's important for us to understand is what normally happens when inflation remains as elevated and is showing no signs of slowing down because right now central bankers have the printer right on print mode. It is going burr, burr, burr. So what we want to ask ourselves is why do we want, want to consider investing in gold mining ink? Again, you can find that ticker. You can find that stock under the ticker symbol G-O-L-D or gold on the TSX or under G-L-D-G on the New York Stock Exchange. There's a few key things I want to go through here and just try to explain uh, G-L-D-G at a high level. I have to say that uh, Amir, uh, who we've had interviewed on this uh, channel before, we've profiled both his companies. This man impresses me. Um, I, he's a serial entrepreneur and a capital markets genius, to put it simply. Um, his past performance and uh, the opportunity to get into this company here is very, very attractive. Why? He's delivered results. Um, after speaking with Amir and watching how he is involved in the resource sector, he kind of reminds me of the Elon Musk of mining. And I say that because um, he is turned onto a business model that I have um, admired and I've been watching for more than a decade myself. Um, I actually started my stock market journey by investing in gold stocks. And the story that resonated with me most uh, was actually the streaming business, which is what Amir is focused on for one of his companies. So we had a lot to talk about on our last interview. And uh, he's very smart, uh, but most importantly for investors, he gets results. So what does that mean? Well, for Uranium Energy Corp, uh, during two periods uh, from March of 2020 through to November of 2021, 1,000% uh, returns, 1,035. And from July of 2021 to November of 2021, only 189%. Either one of those numbers is very big. And I think any investor would be happy with that performance, especially with the rocky start the stock market is off to this year. We can also look at uranium, uh, uranium Royalty Corp. Again, for, uh, for the same period, July, uh, July to November of 2021, 153%. Then we can look at uh, the period from March 2020 to November 2021, 875%. What does that mean? Uh, again, uh, if you give Amir some money, again, by buying one of the stocks that he manages or owns, uh, what it means is that you probably don't want to sell. Uh, the longer you give him a chance to hold on, the more he's going to deliver. And time in the market is very difficult. And uh, again, just since it's IPO, uh, Uranium Royalty Corp is up by 329. Uh, That's pretty incredible. It means that there is a track record of success here. And uh, GLDG, the last I checked, so far just this year is up 42%. But when we look at what has been delivered in the past for other companies Amir's involved with, I don't think that 42% is the end. I think it's the start. And... Um, why would we want to doubt him now? Um, this is the company that is he's the chairman and CEO of. And uh, this seems like a passion project for him. So I'm uh, I'm personally quite interested because I admire him. I think he's a really smart man. Um, not only that, uh, there's powerful backers. So who's backing him? Well, BlackRock, Rick Rule, Doug Casey all own the stock. I recognize all those names. Like I said, I'm a little bit of a gold nerd. Um, I've been investing in gold since about uh, the mid-2000s. And uh, BlackRock, uh, they're big, right? That's the big dog. Uh, BlackRock's the big one. Larry Fink, they know what they're doing over there. Rick Rule, um, hard to argue that this man doesn't know um, the commodity space and notably gold. He's one of the authorities in the space. And then Doug Casey, uh, I read one of his books in the uh, like in the early uh, 2010s. I forget which one. Um, someone who uh, is very important in the resource sector. Not only that, there's other, uh, other uh, holdings as well. Top holdings are from KCR. GDXJ or the junior uh, GDXJ. Again, I tracked that one myself. Roofer Gold, Extract Capital, Sprott Global, um, Marin uh, Katuda. Uh, we got BlackRock. We got Oppenheimer Holdings, which means um, a lot of people who are in the know are invested in the stock. Um, last thing I'll say here is that there are exclusive updates and information uh, provided from, by the company at gldgnews.com. So that's just the ticker symbol uh, dot, uh, dot com. And uh, the reason why that website is great is because if you're not uh, if you're not super savvy, you're looking for updates, you want to learn more about the space. This is a great way to stay to stay informed. So 
head over to GLDG, gldgnews.com if you want to learn more. We'll leave that link in the description too if you're uh, wondering where uh, to find that. Uh, moving forward here, um, gold mining assets. And uh, what I really took away from uh, one of the, uh, sorry, from the interview I did with Amir on the channel was that he understands that some areas are more geopolitically stable and lower risk than others. What does that mean? He's developed a, a pretty nice, uh, a uh, pretty nice uh, portfolio here when it comes to his gold mining assets. And uh, they're all in pretty safe places. Uh, you can see that uh, 80 80% 80 of the uh, um, allocation is to gold, some copper and silver, silver just because uh, every mine or every place they're mining always has a little bit of byproduct. And in, in this case here, that's what they have, a little bit of byproduct. So again, geopolitically safe. Uh, I'm sure he's done his due diligence on those assets. And um, not only that, uh, there are people who are backing it. So Gold Royalty Corp, again, success, successfully raising $113 million on the strength of their assets. Why? Because they got a 15% ownership. So uh, owning 15% of the company was able to launch them a successful IPO. Uh, they got 16.2 million ounces and 16.2 million inferred resource. And uh, that's a multi-million uh, gold ounce equivalent. That's huge. And uh, we look over here again, $130 million in cash and equity holdings, strong financial platform. They have sufficient funds to maintain and advance the portfolio, um, right? They've also, uh, they've got some other shares here, right? 20 million uh, G-Roy shares at $5 and uh, $1.1 million in cash. So this company is very, very well capitalized. And what does that mean? Well, it means they're prime for growth. And they tell us right here, dual pronged approach. Advance the existing gold mining portfolio, including pursuing partnerships and JVs. Continue to evaluate accretive acquisition opportunities. And uh, the company's been successful at doing this, where they try to go and do something and then they get attention for it. Um, here we have a uh, analyst report from Haywood Capital up here in Canada. And uh, they're giving it a buy rating as of July for 425. Note the date here. This is July, July 12th. We go to the next one here, and this is from HC. Um, we can note here that in July as well, they, they give it a rating of a buy and they reiterate their buy. But then shortly after another deal is closed, um, what they what they tell us here is that, um, again, they're reiterating, they're reiterating their buy and raising a price target. This is only about a month and a half later. So um, you can see now that uh, the price target here is at $6. From Haywood, it was at $4.25. That's a lot above where the price is right now. So when we looked at the previous, uh, sorry, at the first slide where we looked at Amir's performance, it's pretty reasonable to assume that if we hold on, we're probably going to get these targets hit. And uh, the year is shaping up very, very well for the company so far. Like I mentioned, up 42% year to date. All right. So now coming back to the elephant in the room, inflation. So if it's not, uh, if it's not at a level we've seen since 1982, what does history tell us about a super cycle in gold, which is what I've been talking about for a while. Uh, the thing about a super cycle is you don't know you're in it until you look back, at least for me. Um, I'm only I'm only 33, so I have not really seen a, su a super cycle through to completion, but I think we're in the middle of one. Why? You can't print all this money and expect there not to be inflation. And everyone's been saying, ah, oh, it's not real. It's transitory, blah, blah, blah. Here we are. It's real. Not seen since 1982, 7%. That is incredibly high. Um, and now we look here. It's uh, again, uh, gold retains its value when other assets do not. So starting off the year, I think people would be very happy with something that's a little bit more boring, a little bit more predictable and something that can hedge against the normal volatility find in the market here. Um, right. Gold is boring, but safe. That's what I really like about it. One of the things I like about it um, on this channel, we also really like patterns. Here we can see a textbook cup and handle pattern. So uh, this is looking at a weekly chart on the monthly chart. I see the exact same thing. I'm looking for a decisive move above the 1900 previous all time high. And then it is clear sailings much higher. So what is a super cycle, um, a new commodity cycle in the making? Well, look here, this goes all the way back to 1815, right? That is a long time, right? That's 200 years. We're in a huge, huge megaphone. So what does that mean? Well, eventually when the trend gets underway and that short-term pattern we saw with the, with the cup and handle, uh, we're probably going to hit escape velocity. And if we're able to hit that level that we talked about, again, 1900, 2000, blue sky breakout, boom, we're going to be going dramatically higher. 
Uh, compared to the S&P commodities, are dirt cheap? What does that mean? Well, as you're probably noticing on the tape, when things are being told to us that uh, inflation is temporary, gold did not budge. It's been up every day since the FOMC meeting minutes and since Jerome Powell gave his, uh, his congressional testimony for his reappointment, which means that gold doesn't believe it. And I think people are preferring to own gold over Bitcoin, at least for right now. Um, gold mining is also much more profitable than before. It's more profitable than ever. What does that mean? With all those ounces in reserve, Gold Mining Inc. is going to be better able to uh, to better, better able to generate profit from that. Why? Well, ounces in the ground that are not extracted yet can use future technologies to generate more margin and more profit for people like us, the shareholders. Central banks are building up their gold reserves. And I think the reason why is because it is a race to the bottom for the world. All the central banks are printing like crazy. And uh, what does that mean? They're not backed by anything. Fiat currency by default is not backed by anything. So when the rooster comes home and these central banks have to deal with the debt they've been, uh, all the debt that's uh, that's issued, there's probably going to be something uh, to get backed with. And that's probably going to be gold. So as much as these central banks say that gold is maybe not as important as it used to be, they keep buying it. So why would they buy it if it was not important? Um, so at a high level, in about uh, 10 minutes there, that is Gold Mining Inc. Again, you can find them under the ticker symbol gold on the TSX or under the ticker symbol GLDG on the New York Stock Exchange. Finally, GLDGnews.com. Thank you very much for watching, and I would really appreciate it if you could smash a thumbs up and drop me a comment. I've never heard about gold mining before uh, doing this video. I am very interested. I'm considering making an investment. Let me know what you think. What do you think about gold? What do you think about Amir? And what about this company specifically? Thank you for watching. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.